G'day everyone, this is Ozzy Okdok, and thank you for visiting my channel, What's Okdok? I'm a doctor from Australia, and I specialize in the field known as occupational medicine. In this video, I'll be discussing hazardous manual tasks, which is one of the largest contributors to workplace injuries not only in Australia, but also globally. The definition of a hazardous manual task is a task requiring a person to lift, lower, push, pull, carry, or otherwise move, hold, or restrain any person, animal, or thing. The characteristics of a manual task can affect whether it is hazardous. These can be broadly divided into forces, which is a result of physical exertion coming from muscular effort which overloads the body, particularly if it's repetitive force, stacking a large number of objects, Sustained force over a period of time, pushing a heavy object with the maximum tension and effort, high force, lifting a heavy object, and sudden force, a jerking and unexpected movement without giving the body adequate time to adapt, such as carrying an unstable load or throwing a heavy object. Repetitive movement, repetition of a specific body movement to perform a task over a period of time, for example, painting. Posture, sustained posture, you have the body or body part in a specific position for an extended period of time. For example, poor sitting position at an office workstation. Awkward posture, sustained positions that are uncomfortable or unnatural can be hazardous. For example, postures which require excessive bending of the neck to look above. Vibration, whole body vibration, is when vibration that is created is transmitted through the entire body, such as an operator sitting in a heavy tractor. Hand-arm vibration describes transmission of vibrations from a machinery tool to the hands operating it, for example, working with chainsaws or jackhammers. Hazardous manual handling tasks predisposes workers to direct body stress and can lead to the development of musculoskeletal disorders, or MSD. MSD encompasses a wide range of diseases and injuries related to the musculoskeletal system, and this includes muscles, joints, tendons, ligaments, bones, spinal discs, and even nerves. Examples of work-related MSDs include muscular sprains and strains, injuries to the back or joints, such as the shoulder, elbow, knees, and hands, Repetitive stress injuries, such as carpal tunnel syndrome. Soft tissue injuries, such as hernias. These could be acute as a result of sudden or unexpected movement, or develop over a prolonged period of time as a result of gradual wear and tear. A study of workers' compensation claims in Australia from 2015 to 2016 showed that 125,000 of those were work-related MSDs. These affected workers come from all age groups. However, the highest rate of serious claims were in the age group of 55 to 64. MSDs affect workers in a wide spectrum of industries. And in Australia, the top three industries include healthcare, retail trade, and transport warehousing. So what are the common injuries that occur? According to studies in Australia, the three most common areas of the body that have the highest percentage of MSDs are the back with 35%, the shoulder with 16%, and the knees at 13%. What influences the development of work-related MSDs can be complex. The most current models suggest that it is a combination of factors within both the workplace and the worker. In terms of the workplace, factors can include the occupational role, for example, heavy lifting, repetitive roles, adverse postures, organizational factors, which include job design, such as work schedules, workload, and break times, and psychosocial factors, such as the level of supervision, support, and workplace culture. In terms of factors of the individual worker, these can include the characteristics of the worker, for example, age, physical conditioning, smoking status, BMI, chronic medical conditions can affect how their body responds to heavy loads. 
individuals' response and coping mechanisms to stress and fatigue, and psychosocial factors, which describes the worker's belief around their work, including job demand, control, satisfaction, and security. The combination of personal factors in the context of workplace-related hazards can lead to an increased risk of the development of workplace-related MSDs. These can result from a single acute event or accumulate over a long period of time, making managing these hazards, both physical and psychological, very difficult. If we look at hazardous manual tasks in the context of the hierarchy of controls, we can find ways to effectively manage these hazards in the workplace. With elimination, the workplace should always aim to eliminate the hazard as much as reasonably practicable. This is best done at the planning or design stage of a work process, rather than when it's already established in the workplace. A good example is automating a manual task through the use of robots or machinery. If the hazard cannot be eliminated, then substituting the hazard with the hazard that is safer should be attempted. For example, splitting heavy objects into smaller, more manageable items. However, this can increase the volume and repetition of work. You can also review machinery or tools that are used at work and replace them with those requiring less force or vibration. Engineering controls. Engineering controls involve implementing work processes to aid the worker or isolate the hazard from the worker. This could involve the use of mechanical aids or trolleys to move and deliver heavy loads. In terms of posture, the use of ergonomic workstations which can be adjusted to suit the posture of the particular worker. Administrative controls. These controls involve implementing changes to work policies and procedures in order to minimize the hazard. One particular example is for the workplace to adopt the recommended NIOSH lifting guidelines. Reviewing work schedules to ensure sustainable workloads, regular rotation of roles, and rest breaks. As well as implementing education and training for the workers. So in summary, hazardous manual tasks can result in the development of workplace MSDs. MSDs are the most common injuries seen in the workplace. They result through the combination of factors from both the workplace environment and the individual worker. And finally, an effective workplace management plan would involve the understanding of the hierarchy of controls and implement risk management strategies accordingly. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that I provided you with some valuable information in the area of occupational medicine. I value any feedback, therefore please feel free to leave a comment on any of my videos, as well as a like if you enjoyed it. If you find my content of value, Please subscribe and share them with your family and colleagues. Have a good day.